hello, welcome back to my art center, welcome back to yet another episode on this channel. Today we're gonna try something a little different because it's something new, at least for this channel, because we're gonna join the trend of coloring a children's coloring book. So it's all over YouTube, all over the internet, seems to be the new thing. So. We don't want to miss out. You probably are already a bit late to the party. I will use my Copic markers for this. And this is our manga book. It's by Boon Hao, the Manga Mania Story Troll My Book. My Book is a coloring book, basically. Uh, and so let's check out some of the pictures inside. You have a character on all these illustrations but also you have so much stuff going on like these cool creatures cool animals and they kind of really remind me of Pokemon actually it's, it's just looking incredible guys I can't wait to color those in the paper though seems to be not super thick which isn't bad I think it's 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 okay because I really love also coloring with Copic markers on just plain copy paper because that works really well but unfortunately it bleeds through so keep that in mind if you do it with Copic markers guys and uh, look at all these beautiful illustrations wow and this is the illustration from the cover so that's pretty amazing as well I kind of fell in love with this one and this one this seems like the good versus evil thing you know this could be like the bad sister this could be the good sister like uh what should we do like good this one or bad let me know down in the comments right now good or bad i will choose the bad one of course who would have thought for this kind of mm. illustration it would be smarter to start with base tones so we're gonna set in all of the base tones gonna go really light and gonna take our time for this Try to search a cool color scheme and then we're gonna add some shadows later on. So, I'm really excited for this guy. So, gonna start with the face. Try to take some time and be really careful not to draw over the lines. So, we're gonna definitely keep a darker theme for this. Gonna work a lot with purples, pink and reds. I think we want to make this character like really badass. Yeah, but I like this pink for her hair so let's try to color this in we gonna leave out a highlight for the hair directly in the beginning so where we're not gonna color in something so I'm gonna just use this same tone that I used for her hair uh, probably for her dress right here I'm not sure where this is gonna lead me, but you just have to be brave when you color with markers and when you color traditionally. Uh, because, yeah, you have to make a decision and if you don't want to spend like a million hours on this, um, then you, yeah, have to make a decision. Even if it turns out not to be amazing, then that's how it is, okay? So, no need to worry about this too much. We want to have a main focus on the big snake and on the character in the end. So I think that's a smart idea to just color in all of the, these characters with the same tone. Okay, so I colored in all of the, I don't know, little snakes, I, I call them little snakes. Uh, they could also be like little fish or something. Now I think we're gonna color in the huge snake and let's actually make this snake a bit shiny. So if we color in the edge right here, we will create like a little highlight on the snake so that will make the snake look like it's shiny so remember if you have different surfaces like a smeary shiny surface you have to color it differently with hard shadows um, harder edges like so and that will make your snake look like it's it's a bit slimy <laughs> I think you will get it a bit better in the end
And I'm, I'm like really undecided with those waves, guys. Should I make them darker or brighter than the snake? Maybe like a gray, black, gray, dark purple. Okay, I'm gonna use this darker purple for this as a base zone. And this is probably a good end point, but it's too dark for our base zone. I just realized this, so um, I think I need to start with a slightly brighter color. Like this one, this is actually like a gray, but I think that's better if we start with this color and then go over it later with our purple. I want to continue with um, yeah, working on her dress and the shoes and the details a bit more and I think I don't know if I want to bring in a second color there. So I'm thinking about making these details with a purple as well or a pink or a red. Okay, what about this tone here? Let's see. Not dark enough. Okay, now this could actually work as a nice accent tone. And so I'm giving those things like a bit of a shiny texture by leaving out like a big shiny part in the middle. So this could look like uh, those are some shiny diamonds or something. Because I don't like that all of these have the same tone. So still remember, if you start light with light tones, you can do this. Like if you don't like it, paint over this with a darker tone just remember that it's not possible the other way around okay so always as I said in the beginning start with the lightest tones and then get darker and darker because if you don't like something you can go over it with a darker tone if you start too dark this is definitely not possible also there's always the option to test your colors digitally first before you do something like that um, but it's really time consuming and I really like this more intuitive approach uh, but it's definitely up there for failure a bit more and you know you can fail a lot more if you don't test your colors beforehand we have nothing to lose as I said uh, we can be brave we can try to put in like a purple gradient into here a mix between a gradient and a shadow tone already Okay, so the purple down here, and then we go back over this with our initial base tone to make this gradient even smoother. Like so. Then if we go up to the top, then this will make colors there even brighter. So like this, I like that. Oh yeah, see if we can make this work on the dress as well. Slowly going upwards and then back over it with the brighter tone to give it a really nice gradient. And even though we haven't put in a single shadow yet i really like how it looks so far so now it's time for the fun part we're gonna put in a lot of details and shadows um, and we're gonna start with this um darker tone right here i don't know which one it was was it this one yeah i think violet 17. okay this is the tone where we will go really dark If you like this video so far, leave a like so I can maybe yeah, 
do another page of these. There are so many amazing pages. We can have so many different colors. I think it's like so perfect for learning, guys, honestly. I'm gonna use E50 again to make it a bit wet. So we can have a nice blush on the cheeks. Let's see if we can do it. Like so. And then we're gonna go over it with E50 again just to bring this skin tone to life a bit more. It doesn't really look alive right now. And this is just by putting those reddish tones on the hands a bit, on the elbows, looks always pretty good. That is a nice color for the shadow. I like that. The anatomy on the armpit here is a bit wonky, so uh, some of the line work could definitely need a bit more refining. That would make this even look a bit cooler, but still, as I said, really love the job that she did with this coloring book. Gonna add some shadows on the folds down here on her dress. Also, don't worry too much if your shadings with markers look too dark in the beginning. Um, when it dries, it looks always a lot brighter, so don't worry about that too much, guys. Uh, it's all good, it's all good, as I said. Just have fun. Don't stress yourself too much with those. And then, yeah, you will probably be able to achieve some cool looking results. I want to color in the snake right now. I think I want to just keep really soft shadows for this because I, I think I really like the color and it's not distracting too much. And it really, it's always looks really good when you want to make something look shiny if you have um, a really light tone and then directly besides this the darkest tone like here and then a lighter tone again. We're getting closer and closer to be done with this. Okay, some shadows down here on the folds. Really important as well. Don't forget where your light source is coming from, always. Okay, I think what I will do still is want, I want to give the snake just a bit of a, more of a high contrast here and there. So just with a more reddish saturated tone, I think that could work and could look a bit more interesting and That's always, I think, a great tip for beginners. Um, if you don't always have to shade with the same tone, you know, you can always, let's say you have a blue, blue is you, you can always shade in with a more reddish tone. That will always make things look more alive. Like, like you see here, it, it looks so, so much better, I feel. Just by putting in this red tone in the end, you know, so. finished artwork I have to say I'm so so proud of myself I really love how this turned out uh, I think it's my best Copic marker rendering so far I love how the snake turned out in the end and I really also love the gradients of the hair and the dress and like everything uh, I think the colors they work really well together so it's the first time I'm like really 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 happy about uh, uh, coloring I did with the Copic markers so um, yeah guys click the like button if you like this video and if you want to see 
me doing another one of these episodes. I mean, we have so many amazing, cool looking artworks in this book, so we can do a lot more. There are so many more coloring books out there as well. So if you want to see more, definitely leave a like, let me know down in the comments and subscribe to this channel, guys. Also, I share a lot of my work in progress and my time in the studio right here over on Instagram. So you should definitely also follow over there. Then I will hopefully see you guys in my next episode. See you there and bye bye guys.